Studies show that the Arctic is warming at a rate of two to three times faster than the rest of the Earth. Carbon is stored in permafrost beneath the tundra, and researchers aren't sure how fast that carbon may be released into the atmosphere. Studying how animals in the tundra may influence ecological processes underground may provide some insight. We're specifically interested in how animals, um, specifically small herbivores, either exacerbate or mitigate the effects of climate change. Even on cold, rainy days like today, there is a lot of research on going outside of Tulik Field Station on the Arctic tundra. But did you know that something as small as a vole could possibly play a role in climate change? We're looking at voles and lemmings. Um, they're ubiquitous in the Arctic, so they occur everywhere. They're also active year round. So that means they don't hibernate and underneath the snow, they're still working, they're eating plants. Um, they're making waste, they're clipping uh, leaves, they're making nests to sleep in. Um, so they have a really big impact on the tundra. With sites in three regions of the Arctic, this team is specifically interested in determining how these herbivores affect carbon pools and nutrients in the tundra. They have fencing enclosures to study their impacts on plants and soil, and have also set up several grids of live traps with peanut butter and bird seed to attract the small mammals. They use a capture-recapture technique to learn more about the herbivore's home range, density, and more. We want to know what sex they are because that matters in terms of their effect on the tundra. A female is going to reproduce and have babies, whereas a male, maybe not so much. Um, so we sex them. Um, we also take some samples from them. We'll take a hair and a fecal sample. So we can, that way we can tell what they're eating. What exactly small mammals are eating is important because they have a big impact on carbon and nutrient cycling. A small mammal going about its day, it's gonna clip some leaves that's going to release nutrients back into the environment faster than if it wasn't there. Um, it's also going to eat certain plants compared to other plants. And plants have different rates at which they either store or release carbon. A recent study in Sweden looked at the tundra after a peak year of rodents and were able to measure the difference in plants from satellite images taken from space. This gives researchers here in northern Alaska reason to believe the effects in the Arctic may be just as great. Depending on what happens with natural populations of rodents, we can have some predictive power on what their influence on carbon exchange is going to be. From the Arctic Tundra at Tulik Field Station in Alaska, I'm meteorologist Cheryl Nelson for AccuWeather.